in a world. Four friends, one mission. Mikey, what are you doing? I'm doing the thing for the podcast. It's not that hard, bud. Dude, just say the name. Fine. It's the Freedom Friends Podcast. Hey, guess my part. Uh, I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> 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 that was the other thing. Did you see Bert do that shit? I said it to you. I did, I did, what I did. the fuck was that, dude? He farted on their show, and he's like, I just shit my pants. 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 And then he was like, let me check. And he's like, oh, no, I don't think I did. He's like, give me a tissue. He wipes his ass on the camera, and he goes, no, it's clean. It's clean. And Segura's about to fucking vomit everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, holy fuck, man. What a degen. Oh, oh I actually, God. I felt totally justified when there was a... Uh, <laughs> One of their clips came across and I and uh, I saw the comments and there were so many people out there that were right there with me. They're like, is anybody else just fucking burnt out on Burt Kreischer? Yeah. Like it just they've just they've had a fuck enough. And I'm like, yeah, because he's a one, he's one gag that he's been riding on for fucking forever, forever. Yeah. And the more he gets out there in the public, the more it's just like you have just this one gag, right? Like just the, like I love him as a podcaster. I can't. I don't. I, I, that's what killed him I for me. I don't like his stand up. I love Segura as a I just want to drink with I love Segura for both. Like Segura and his wife with I would a drink fucking with podcast. Bert. Oh, I want to drink with Bert so much. All day. <laughs> yeah. But your mom's house, great fucking show. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, fucking. Whose house? <laughs> Runs house. <laughs> <laughs> My end. How y'all feel? <laughs> All right, can we do this? We are. We are. Yeah, doing we this. have been. It oh. opened. It opened. It opened. With, I just guess shit my myself. <laughs> can, can you can you cut out where I'm shitty all over uh, one of my favorite comedians <laughs> no. shows? No, no, no. Too the, late now. The listeners know hey, need to know your true feelings. <laughs> right. What I'll think it? about it. I want to drink with you, Bert. I want to drink with you, Bert. Speak. I of would that, like to. Drink I with sent. You. Actually, I bet. I bet, Bert. I bet I can out drink you. Oh. Oh shit. I bet I can out drink you, Bert. I'll put fold money on it. I'm actually more interested in the fact that Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer have been doing studio trades with other podcasts. Yeah. I mean, we'll trade. They can have this one. We'll take theirs. No, you <laughs> <laughs> You trade and record an episode and then you go back. And it gets put out under the same name, but oh, the, the yeah. host change over. Oh. It's a studio trade. Oh. It, it would be like uh, uh, if, we, if we got a hold of JT for, what's that new one? Time, Time for Pie. Time for Pie. And they came and recorded here, but still put it out underneath the Freedom Friends. And then we went and recorded Time oh, for Pi. Yeah. And it, it'd be the same. It would not be same. the same. It's, yeah, it's same, the same concept. concept. <laughs> <laughs> if you've listened to Time for Pi, it's, uh, those guys are off their fucking chain. It's, I, it's I, hilarious. It's hilarious, but it makes... It, I think we have too many, like, too much bullshit banter. And, I mean, not too much, but, like, we never have a real serious conversation yeah. until I listen to their podcast. I'm like, oh, sometimes we have a serious conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. Because they do not. Yeah. Yeah. It's However, did you see where Caleb Francis made that sandwich for Bam and Jerry oh, yeah. and Jack? And that looks really good. We, have you ever deep fried a bun? Nope, but I want to. Fucking A, <laughs> man. He deep fried a sub roll. To make like I, a turkey salad sandwich. And I was like, fuck you, man. That sounds sorry, amazing. Yeah. I didn't mean to derail this into us reviewing other people's podcasts. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reviewing a sandwich. That's it. Yeah, I got a podcast <laughs> we should review. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Joe Rogan's. Now I'm good. Okay. Why? What? I don't know. I just wanted to. We're just, just reviewing podcasts. I, I was like, might as well pick the biggest and best one out there. Sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> that thing's a piece of shit. <laughs> I, I think he I does a take, fair job. I would take <laughs> 1%. Well, of listeners podcast yeah. see I'll, I'll, I'll trade 1%. with him percent we do studio trade with oh, yeah, right. studio now, though. that's yeah. the way it'd be yeah, easy it wouldn't be so bad yeah i think he would like our studio because he could smoke cigars and fuck off i'm actually kind of curious yeah. it, it, that's a good fan question actually like given the opportunity if the freedom friends had a chance to to do a studio trade who with another know? podcast who would it who would it be not another podcaster guest on our shit like literally yeah. they come and they do our show and we go and do their show and, 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 and I'm, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and please say Please be Rogan. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Fucking believe. Look, here's yeah. the deal, guys. Imagine you know. protect our parks with these four? Fucking A. <laughs> it's not going to be Rogan. Rogan's not, Rogan's not going to do it. So 
Uh, but if he does, <laughs> but if he does, <laughs> what if he did? But it'd be fun. It'd be a good time. I, I'm not gonna lie. Anybody that he's had access to to be able to interview it, I'd, I'd 100% like to interview. But uh, our boy Justin Governell, who was on the show, uh, recently did Shane Gillis' secret podcast. So. I want to do Joe Rogan's podcast. What well, does that count because, because it's Rogan Snoop adjacent? We have like, had, yeah, we have <laughs> had, we've had a Rogan guest on our podcast before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a couple of them probably. Uh, I, I want to do Rogan's podcast, do that trade, but I want Snoop Dogg to be on it. Oh God! Oh yeah. That episode was awesome. Yeah, I'm not out smoking Snoop Dogg. I will I'll, try, I'll, but I'll out drink <laughs> Bird Kreischer. The only dude who could who, like. Who Snoop admitted has ever outsmoked him was Willie Nelson. Yeah, I, which is fucking just speaks volumes of Willie's gangsterness. Is I, anybody shocked? No, fuck no. <laughs> I will. Give Willie's it a been good spoken at that effort. level <laughs> since before Snoop Dogg was alive. Yeah, dude, since like the '60s, bro. Like, well, Willie's like 109. <laughs> like, he's up there. Still putting out quality shit. He also still looks like he did in the '60s. Like, nothing's changed. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like smoked meat, man. Like you can you can maintain that shit for like fucking decades. It, like, and I'm pretty sure that's where he's decades. <laughs> it's just smoked meat. Yeah, it's weird. It, my brisket went bad after like ten days. <laughs> it's like my my great grandmother. You didn't died. keep smoking. My great grandmother died at 107, <laughs> and everybody's like, "How did she live that long?" And I was like, smoked. "I was like, I know, I know. That woman drank beef eater straight. That's gangster." So when <laughs> when I got old enough to to drink, so that's. Been a little bit now. Uh, and I started hanging out with my great grandmother. I went up to her bar and I was like, can I make you something? She's like, yeah, I'll have a gin and tonic. And I was like, okay, it, it, I'm going to warn you. I'm not very good at cocktails. So it might be a little strong. And she goes, no, you don't understand. So you can hold the tonic. Like, <laughs> so she just had, wave it over my <laughs> she, glass. So she had beef eater on the bar uh, because she's old school Dallas money, right? Like her, her husband used to own Tennessee dairy, which sold to Oak farms. And then they started buying real estate and building the condo high rises before the big D boom. Yeah. And so she's old money Dallas. And so in those houses you had a bar, but then there was also a bar cart that yeah. moved from room to room with you. Cause her house in Hollywood park had, or Highland park had like servants passages in it so that you didn't see the people that worked for you when they moved around. Oh, God Why would you want to and, fucking pours? And so <laughs> the main room had, had a full bar, the mirrored back, the glass yeah. shelves and stuff. So when they hosted, they could bring in bartenders that ran it. But when she moved rooms, there was a cart that moved rooms with her. I have a new goal in life. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then she downsized when she got older. I don't want a cart. I want the donkey though. Yeah, she downsized to a 3,400 square foot condo that was a mile from her house when she downsized. 3,400 square foot condo. Yeah. That's bigger than my house. Oh, yeah. It's bigger than most people's houses. It was incredible. It's my, yeah. Mine's 32. Yeah. Yours is 30. Mine's 28. Neither are small homes. No. (laughs) Mine's 27, and this was her condo. And it was was like, fuck. But uh, she had the same bar cart. And so it moved around. And so I was in her condo and asked her if I could make her a drink. And I was like, I'm a little strange. She was like, you can hold the tonic. So she had a the big handle of beef eater. And that, that was, the, but in her freezer were nips of beef eater. And in the nips were uh, the garnish, like lemon and lime, like zest garnish that was in the beef eater so that it would cure in the beef eater. So that when you made her a drink, you pulled the garnish out. And stuck it in her drink so that the flavor of the lemon didn't dilute the flavor of the gin. What a gangster. <laughs> and this is how she'd been drinking since like the 50s. Yeah. And everybody was like, how'd you make it to 107? And I was like, That's pickling. It, like, <laughs> <laughs> From the inside <laughs> out. <Pickled>. <laughs> Fucking I. <laughs> but like at 96, she went to Utah to go snowmobiling. Nice. Like she Dude. was a fucking G. <laughs> was she cremated by chance? Oh, Jesus. I don't think they could. No, because I think it, it would have burnt bl- the whole. Place. It would have well, just, just smelled like like a. It would have smelled like the day after Christmas. They, like just burning fucking trees, man. Just juniper burning. Yeah. Okay. She was a like, fucking. Do not there. let cool. beer open fu- open flame. Fucking. <laughs> and her daughter's just like her, man. So you all have met my yeah, my yeah. grandmother, who's mm-hmm. and that's that's Jean, who's a rock star, direct daughter, and uh, so she just had hip surgery. Yeah, and uh, and she's ninety. Yeah, 90. She's 90? Yeah. So she wow. just had hip surgery. She looks 75. She tops. had hip surgery at 730. She's great. She had hip surgery at 730. Uh, 
went home same day and my mother sent me a video in the house of 11 o'clock of my grandmother walking in the kitchen to start pouring wine walking into yeah. the kitchen i was like fucking dude built oh, yeah. fucking different yeah now i'm pissed that my mother's adopted because i'm like that shit's not passing down <laughs> <laughs> Before I heard this story, if you guys like, were going to ask, well, does Jazz got an inherent? No, he's a, he's part of an adopted family. They don't care about those people. Uh, before I heard this story, <laughs> ask John from last I, week. He knows he's an asshole. Doesn't fucking care about adoption. It's fucking at all. gold. That was gold. Oh god, those. I'm I, I, the rest of my life. I'm just waiting for the opportunity to be able to deliver that fucking joke. Not just goals. So, so two things. One, real quick. Before I heard that story, the only other goal I had in life was to be able to put my shoes on and breathe at the same time. <laughs> Good goal. It's a hard goal. It really is. I <laughs> bet you there's a lot of listeners out there that are like, motherfucker, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Now, it wasn't a goal I want to be able to put my shoes on and breathe at the same time so I can walk to the next room in my house and a bar cart follows me. Mm -hmm. That's my new goal in life. Yep. Yeah, it's fucking. Uh, and then the other aspect, did you guys listen to our amazing producers edit of the intro, the opening of the debate. No. Oh, it is gold. I, I, didn't, I didn't. It finish. is absolute gold. Yeah, I will tell you right now. So before the show, guys, we just did a, uh, everybody's sharing their Spotify wrapped right now. Yeah. And, and look, the fans out there that have shared it on our page and stuff like that, y'all are doing the Lord's work. Like, y'all are 1,301 of you who we are your top podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no, because you're, of- Your number one thing yeah. to listen to. Uh, yeah, well, then no, we were in the those- yeah, where they're top one percent of everything they listen yeah. to is what that said. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Um, can Justin, can you pull up the intro but, uh, to that and put it on the screen with volume? But so we were we were going through uh, all yeah, those numbers, try. and then we'll, I will tell you right we'll now, that none of those numbers are from reactions. me. The what? None of those numbers are from me. Me either. I don't even nope. remember the last time I listened. So to I them. I'll go through like the comments and it's stuff. Been a while. And that's the reason why, like, I went through the comments on the debate. And somebody was like, holy fuck, Justin's ability to edit. And then I was like, what? And so I went on Shopify and, and I, or Shopify, <laughs> Spotify, fuck. Uh, and I watched like the first th like three minutes and I was just like, oh God, this is gold. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break so the boys can uh, review the, the right. new work. We'll be right back. <laughs> Go ahead. No, oh, you count us down. Five, four, three, two, one. Nicola Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't I, remember that entire conversation. <laughs> so I told you guys that we have to watch this because it's good. I didn't I, like, just like you guys said, I didn't remember this. Yeah, I don't. Remember so when that. I saw these comments and I'm like, I'm going to watch the opening. So I click on it and I'm going in cold. Don't remember that. That was me <laughs> or you or you guys. Yeah. And I watched this and I'm like, oh, this is. Yes. We're I mean, this down. is dangerous, but this is gold. <laughs> we drank a lot that evening. The only thing oh. I remember about that evening is that my wife drove home, but before she drove home, she took me to Freebirds and fed me like an entire fucking steak burrito. And it was glorious. We got done with this and Michelle had a subway in the other room and then she drove me home. <laughs> to there? Yeah. What, like a piggyback <laughs> ride? Like I, don't, the, I don't remember. It, <laughs> just pointed in the right direction. Yeah, was, uh, <laughs> I got home and I felt fine and I lay in bed and Haley turns to me. Uh, I thought she was asleep. She turns to me and she goes, how fucking much did you drink? And I was like, <laughs> it was a bit. Some, and she's like, you fucking smell like a distillery. Was like, <laughs> it was a bit. We put a dent in one tonight. I'm guaranteeing that. A dent? We drank a half gallon of Jameson last week. That was, uh, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. The next morning, that was a fucking painful one. I, <laughs> I, I felt, I had a I little did, bit like of I do. That was about it. When I like, drink too much. I get up early to punish myself. Mm -hmm. I was up at 7.30. Well, if you can be a man at night, you could be a man in the morning. That's right. You know, like, uh, and don't get me wrong, I was up. I took Jamo to school. Like, that was hard. 7 a.m. I'm driving to school, one eye in it. And I'm just like, huh. get together. I'm like, dude, I really hope it's teaching. The only thing I remember was like, that driving to get hammered. the burritos. I thought they put a bike lane in. Mikey, you text here because the sideline, there was two of them. And I was like, there's a bike lane here? <laughs> Mikey, <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> At 925, the morning after, yeah. the amount of whiskey that I just sprayed out of my asshole should be illegal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Once I got that I out. I said, that's terrible. It was. Yeah. yeah once I got that out, I no, felt better. No, it was better. the same way. Yeah. I didn't poop right away, and I was like, as soon as I can take a shit, I'm going to feel so much better. And yeah. it was the it was facts. That's, that's like the this, this signifying moment that the hangover is gone. Yeah. When you f just fucking purge it. Yep. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Purge I have nothing your soul else in my system now. <laughs> 
I feel like it also needs to be prefaced that y'all killed that half gallon, right? Yeah. yeah. In four hours. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Between light work. Between four of us. Yeah. And it was it, it wasn't like we were trying. It was casual. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was four and a half because your drink actually your last drink got finished by another oh, individual. Yeah. So on sa- on <laughs> oh, Saturday, right. you weren't here for it. On Saturday, yeah, I was talking to split. Michelle about we were having a calorie in the drinks conversation. I said, "Well, there can't be that much calories in whiskey." Oh, there's a shitload. So she looked it up. That evening, it's more than cock. That- <laughs> Well, that's why you're skinny, sir. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. If it has, uh, I mean, if, if it, it has, has dates, dates in it, it's only 180. 180. <laughs> oh, that's true. All of jo- oh, I'm sorry. All of Jazz's dates have cock in it, so. <laughs> but there's less calories. <laughs> yeah, but the higher the protein intake, the easier so, it is to lose weight. So Michelle figured up how many calories I drank that night. Yeah. So we did the 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 half gallon of Jameson. She divided by four and then added 20% to me. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Uh, no, we were about equal on that. Yeah. If yeah. anything, Jazz and I drank more because this dickhead. Yeah, you decided to pour. He was filling cups. Well, yeah. l- let's remember, he also spilled a, a solid portion. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that wasn't a lot. <laughs> I, I drank 2,000 calories thereabouts. Wow. Jameson oh. that night. I could... Oh, and then I ate that whole burrito too. Like, oh, you put in like four thousand calories that evening. Holy fuck! I, I so, got I got home and crushed some food. So according I to, I, shit. I think it was Jameson, the best burrito I've ever fucking had, though. According to JamesonWhiskey.com, a double of Jameson is sixty six calories. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> it is. If, so this was sixty six calories, and you drink two thousand. <laughs> Well, we, we've, she just looked up whiskey, not Jameson specifically. Oh, oh and, all I see, I'll drink is Jameson. So how many, how many how many calories? And, and she is came in a up. Of she Jameson. came up with a two ounce pour was about 150 calories. There wasn't nothing two ounce pour about what we. Drink. No, I know that's why I drink. So one ounce yeah. has a 70 calories. So, so it doubles 100. Just 86 proof whiskey. 80, but one ounce is a double or a single. A, a one ounce that? is less than a single. Yeah. Yeah. Typically, singles an ounce and a half. It doubles three. So Jameson's like the diet whiskey. Perfect. Dude, Black Barrel's only 80 proof. A proof has nothing so was, to do with so calories. So was regular, JMO. But he said it was 86 proof. Higher the proof, the higher the sugar content. Higher the sugar content, the higher the calorie count. I don't know if that's true. Yes. The higher the proof, sugar the higher is, the calories. Not really? Yeah, sugar is what makes Sugar alcohol. produces alcohol. I, well, okay. I was, But I was thinking... So the higher the alcohol, the more sugar's in the booze. I was thinking yeah. the higher the alcohol, the less sugar. No. No, other way around. Other way around. around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The more you know. Which is why the crisis that I have on my bar, we had to add champagne yeast to stop it from fermenting further because there was so much sugar in it. We literally had to like stop the fermentation process. Dude, we were- it tastes like that's, that beer is made of caramel. Like it's, it tastes like it's it tastes just like a pure cookie. fucking sugar. Yeah, it tastes like, yeah. well, we wanted it to taste like a cookie and it does. Yeah. The problem is, is that... Uh, I have paperwork that says it's 14%. Oh, it's we'll, we'll go that's, with that. That's what it is. We'll go with that paperwork. Paperwork says so. Yep. Yep. It's delicious. I bet you that packs a wallop of a fucking hangover, though, with that amount of sugar content. I probably limit probably. people to two. Yeah. I could probably limit Yeah, but the, two. you're not limited to two. You would know. I'm sure <laughs> you've drank more than two. <laughs> I know I drank one, and I was like, phew. Yeah, we had a guy that would never been in our place before, and felt like I was going to lose a foot. We were diabetes. It, yeah, and told him that, told him about all the beers in the draft, and then that one was made for us. And he was like, "Let's have that." So he had that. He hadn't eaten yet. Drank it, and he was like, "I just went up and ordered Chinese food. I've never ordered Chinese food drunk." And I was like, "You've never drank properly." Like, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. What's your go-to uh, drunk Chinese food order? It's an important question. A uh, buffet. Agreed, but. <laughs> if you had to get like one item, like it, like what's your go to? Oh, I don't know. That's hard. Oh, pepper steak. Pepper steak. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Generals. Yeah. Yeah. I like a good lo mein. I do love well, some lo mein. Yeah. That's a given. You got to have the good noodles though. No, I go I go pepper steak because then I and I get it with fried rice. Yeah. And it's just putting all that starch in is a huh. it's a great drunk food. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, there used to be this in Quincy, Massachusetts, and down in Quincy Center. There used to be this Chinese food place. Um. I can't remember the name of it, but it was across the street from the fours, uh, like the backside of the fours. And uh, you, if you went in there, they were open till 4 a.m. 
because they just they captured the drunk crowd. If you went in there after one in the morning, the shit that you see in this place, love oh, those places. my fucking like every night the cops were there. There was crackheads uh, passed out at tables. There was a naked chick in there once. Some dude took a shit in the corner all while I was in there. Like, so <laughs> this place was epic. I would go there after work just to like, I'd order food and then I'd People hang watch. out. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. So you drink it, but have you ever drank in like, like, have you ever drank in DC? Yeah. No, actually. Okay. So you've drank in there, DC. Have yeah. you there's, drank in DC? There's later this week. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have. There. So, uh, in DC, there's places that don't open till midnight, and yeah. they're dollar slice places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So they just roll the cage up, and it's a buck, and you get a f- fucking slice. It's literally. Like, I think I, I think I read about this, and then they traffic children as well. That's on the other, the backside. Oh of the but yeah, 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 that's on the other side. But the shit you will see at that little <laughs> roll up door oh, yeah. at fucking two in the morning in Dude, downtown DC. And absolutely. Just like, well, because. Baltimore is the same group of moron, right? It's all it's it's located close enough that's the same group of moron. There was a place in Fells Point I used to go to called Hot Tomatoes. Great, real shitty, like flat pie, right? But I would see some fucking shit yeah. every t- every night, man. It was right next door to a buddy of mine's bar that he worked at, so I'd always like pass it, and there was always fucking something outlandish yeah. happening. There. I never like, understood how those dollar places open until you go semi sober and get a slice. And then you're watching people that go up and they're like, can I get a slice? And then they set a 20 on it and they're like, all right, uh, here's your change. And they just go, no, keep it. And I'm like, you just spent $20 on a slice of yeah. pizza. Yeah. <laughs> like, that that's how you stay open. Yeah. Like, cause it's the guys that are serving it. It's like the dude that owns it and the children he's trafficking from the back. Like, they're the ones that are <laughs> handing out the slices. Makes sense. So it's not like the kids are getting paid. It's like, we're so. keeping this one. He knows how to make change. <laughs> <laughs> My go-to yeah. Chinese food place to- now. It's so fucking good. And the first time we went, my wife walked in to pick up the order because they don't do delivery. Yeah. Like you can either eat there or you have to call it in. You can go pick it up. And it's like a mile from my house. Yeah. So I just went and picked it up. She, I, I parked, she ran and grabbed it and came out. She was like an eight year old just handed me this paper bag full of Chinese food. And I was like, this is going to be the best Chinese food. Goddamn right. Fucking ever. Fucking Because if a Chinese food place has their kids slinging the register because mm-hmm. they're the only ones that speak English. Yep. That's good fucking Chinese if you, Like if you walk into a Mexican joint in, or a Mexican restaurant in anywhere in San Antonio area and they have to have their, their health score on the wall by the register and if it's a c or below you're getting fucking golden food that's true yeah that's true like it's gonna be good i like to go for bees i like to go for the bees no it's too nice (laughs) they they clean too much the seasoning's not there (laughs) that's true (laughs) uh Hey, this is brought to you by WarfighterTobacco.com. Oh, shit. <laughs> Use that code FTFO. Screw up that sweet, sweet 15% off. Oh, wellness.us for all those CBD treats and needs. Go over there. Use code FREEDOMFRIENDS25. That'll get you a quarter off your order. Check out IC Tech Coolers for those who get it. Go to ictech.com and use code FREEDOMFRIENDS10. Get you 10% off. And check out grillyourassoff.com slash Podcast so you can get 15% off some amazing things that'll make your meat taste great. Also, shout out to Murph. Uh, Jason Murph from Grill Your Ass Off, a good friend of the show, was on Fox Business. Of course. And uh, fucking crushed it, man. Like, absolutely crushed it. Yeah. So, But we get it. Stop posting the video. Like, no, no, post that video. It, it must be nice to have a product that can be on the news. You know the cool part about that, <laughs> that segment is they asked him what his, the name of his company was. And he tried to PG it. He tried to PG it. And the guy's like, no, you can say it. And he's like, ah, uh, and the guy's like, no, I want you to say it. Yeah. And he's like, well, it's grill your ass off. And then, the guy, and then he said it a couple of times. Also the, the, the host for the show. Yeah. And I was like, I appreciate it. No, I'm happy for him. It was awesome. And they got to do the whole setup and everything. It was, it was, it was very cool, but yeah. given the opportunity to shit on Jason, I'm going to fucking shit. Oh, on yeah. Jason. I, think it's- I mean, if you ask nice, he'll probably let you No, I, I'm, I, I- <laughs> I'm one of those. I love seeing my friends do well, and and let's face it, Murph is fucking crushing. Like yeah, he's, he's, he's absolutely killing it. But he's a good dude. Too. This is the text that I uh, sent him today. Biggest like, thing I like about fucking Murph is that like he met all of us years ago yeah. or whatever. And if I call Murph right now, he'll answer the phone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He's a busy motherfucker, but he he keeps he keeps in touch with his people, which I fucking appreciate. Well, I texted him this morning. I said, "Look at you on Fox Business. You so fucking fancy." And he's like, "I was thinking about you in spirit." And I was like, "I could tell." I knew you had a boner and he just laughed, but it's like, <laughs> but he, he, that's the kind of guy, right? Like, yeah, you're right. He's just, he's just, he's one of our buddies and I'm just, I'm stoked for the guy, man. I'm glad that he's, he's doing really, really well. It. Yeah. 
I may have uh, opened up an opportunity for him that uh, I fucking, I hope he gets it. And he's like, well, do I need to do like a finder's fee or whatever? And I was like, no, nah, you can just send me your fucking box of ass and we'll call it good. <laughs> like if you get it, I just, I want, I want the full lineup. I just want yeah. all the ass. I want all the ass. That needs to be the next box. There's a box of ass and then I want all the ass. Mm. And it's, it's just a little bit of everything he makes. Yeah. I was politicking for him last night. So my buddy Jared uh, came over to the house last night. Um, my fat friend, oh. the barbecue master. Yeah. Look, and uh, he came over. He brought me a, a loaf of sourdough he had made. Motherfucker. Like everything that dude makes is fucking amazing. Speaking of sourdough, hmm. did you see this little piece of trivia that's now running around? Okay, so there's this dude that put this article out that he has like reconstituted or whatever this fucking like Roman imperial sourdough strain. Because people have sourdough starters and it's yeah. just like the the yeast bacteria or whatever. For sure. And they so he redid this. So I released this article because it's like this huge sourdough community or whatever. Well, it turns out this is the motherfucker that came up with the entire processing system for the Xbox. <laughs> and he also made the Xbox logo. And the Xbox logo is literally a loaf of sourdough that has that X cut in the top of it. And that's why the logo looks that way is it's a fucking sourdough loaf. Because that was the dude's actual passion with that's sourdough. That's and so weird. he made the, the Xbox logo. It just, it, it's a fucking loaf of sourdough. Get the fuck the, out I here. shit you not. That's funny. Like when you started this, I was like, no, they did. Fuck like, you like, guys. <laughs> so did he. It's, so did he. <laughs> you know, I was like, here it comes. <laughs> you gotta keep him on their toes. <laughs> Thank God for people being into random shit, right? Yeah. Because the farthest thing for, for me is being into Seamus Blackley. Oh, that's what it is. It came from, a, it's, he's an Egyptologist and a fervent baker. And he found uh, yeast samples from an ancient Egyptian pottery to make his own unique sourdough bread. Uh, so sorry, it wasn't Roman. It was Egyptian. That's older. And uh, he made the fucking <laughs> Xbox. But the Xbox fucking logo is, it's, if you've ever seen a traditional sourdough loaf, it's that round loaf with the, and they do yep. the cut in the top to let it separate. Uh, that, <laughs> it's a loaf of sourdough. I can't unsee that. I'll yeah. never be able to unsee that. That's Especially awesome. the green one with the black yeah. in the middle. <laughs> it's a the, the Xbox logo is a loaf of sourdough. That's great. That's fucking hilarious. There they all are. Look at that. All the different types of sourdough bread. It's all sourdough. Especially when they went to like the ball logo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's wow. a loaf of sourdough bread. That's funny. Hilarious. The more you know. Why the fuck do you know that? <laughs> I don't know why I know a lot of shit. Like, that's totally a weird, like, I'm all about some useless knowledge, man. Okay, Mikey, that what's the weirdest thing wack. you know? <laughs> that one's pretty weird. I just fucking. Yeah, but it's culturally know, revel relevant. It is. And it is. yeast is a culture. See the fucking. Layers. <laughs> if it's folded. If it's. Layers. it's layers. <laughs> like uh, a shower, though, I'm full of pockets. There you go. It was fucking delicious. I ate some for breakfast this morning. I made some toast and it was that fucking, was fucking awesome. amazing. Um, but he came over and uh, I was uh, kind of showcasing Murph's stuff. Like, let him try all the salsas. Because, you know, he also has a, a YouTube channel. My buddy Jared does. Frack Daddy Barbecue. Makes some great shit. Um, and he'll explain shit. I like the way Jared explains shit. It's very, very simple. I've watched a couple of his things. And it's he actually, simple. the biggest thing that I like about how Jared handles his videos is... He actually breaks it down Barney style. And there's so many of these people that are, they're so deep into things. They that don't they, realize they're talking to morons. It, it's like, okay, but what Jared if I don't, smells his own. What if I don't <laughs> know what the fuck I'm doing? And now you're talking to me at this fucking expert level. And it's like, if you're going to put information out for the public, yeah, yeah. like it, at least have a primer. It, like at least have a video that kind of goes like, Hey, let's go over terms or let's go over what the fuck we're doing. Don't just jump in at the fucking, there's one expert of, level because then I'm just reading it going like you're useless. There's then, one of his videos that I've referenced every year because he did a, a corned beef and cabbage. He did a corned beef and cabbage video and it's super basic, right? Nothing crazy, but I just reference it every year because the way he did it, I was like, okay, okay. I fucks with that. You know what I mean? And it's just like to make a good corned beef, right? Um, but I was going through all the salsas. He was a big fan of the Reaper. He was a big fan of the, the, of the green salsa. Why don't uh, we get fat man on the show? Yeah, we can. He'd love to. He's, he's also a big fan of whiskey and cigars. So 
Well, and we're a fan of barbecue. Fucking A. I'm sure we can make something happen. Uh, Jerry I mean, we, ta- we talk a lot about World War II, so we can also talk about fucking smoked meats. Like yeah. Can, yeah. Fucking, which we've talked a lot about, too. But I gave him an atomic dong, and I watched Big Boy deflate real fucking quick. That shit, so he was like, what the fuck is in this <laughs> juice? He's like, oh, my God, it's hot as fuck. And I was like, yeah, it's got some, some ass on it, man. Some people don't do spice, man. Oh, he does. He, he can handle spice, but those things are... Murph is also, Murph is, Murph is kind of hateful. What's the podcast where you eat hot wings and they it's called hot, hot ones. ones, hot ones. So they did a video of like people that had the least amount of reaction to these wings. Yeah. That was fun to watch. Dude. Elizabeth Olsen is a yes. robot. Yeah. That girl's a robot. Like, oh, these, no, the terrifying are ones are the ones that go on there that like, I don't really like chicken wings. So I'll just take spoonfuls of the sauce yeah. instead of eating the chicken. Uh, wings. Like, like that. Uh-uh. The fuck's s- wrong with you? Wild. Um, there's been a couple of them that yeah. have been. One of them was Rachel Ray. She didn't eat the chicken. Yes. She just ate the sauce. And it was like, wow. She's a G. Bro. <laughs> that's, that's a G. But man. That says so much about you. Mm-hmm. Some good, some bad. <laughs> <laughs> a lot about you, right? There's some possibility there. <laughs> um, but yeah. Fair warning, John. Good you stuff. can't smoke it that way. This isn't even the right cigar I'm smoking. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> this is the one I'm smoking. It's like a fidget spinner mm-hmm. for the fucking, for his tism over here. Oh, I was, I, I was going through some emails trying to get some shit actually oh, done for, so because we are working I have, right now. It is a work. <laughs> I'm also working. Sorry, guys. Uh, but uh, I watched a show on Netflix. Well, started watching a show. So there is a show on Netflix that came out a couple days ago or yesterday or whatever the fuck it was. It's called Obliterated. Oh, I saw the preview. So the preview looks like, holy shit, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. So uh, the premise of the show is essentially there's a special forces team that's in Vegas that's been on this six month mission. And it's a it's a joint operation. Vegas. Yeah. Team and the the whole thing is that there's a there's a nuke in Vegas. They know this trade is going to go down. And so they send in this joint operations team, at, you know, a ragtag team, if you will. So oh, the, the operator, <laughs> the, the pull trigger portion comes out of the army and then they bring in a, a I thought it was interesting because they bring in a helicopter pilot from the air force. And I was like, huh, you guys didn't really do your homework here, did you? Yeah. But there's a couple, there's a couple, but most of the rotor wing shit is, I would rather is army owned fucking SF dude, fucking flying my so helo. Man. The, <laughs> the pull trigger guys are out of the army, the EOD guys out of the army. And then they have, uh, some lanely people that are there for the Intel portion and, and da, 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 da. And I was like, all right. And it's, it's, it's supposed to be a comedy. And so it, it's kind of a, this is not a, Storyline that goes along with comedy. But and so, okay. well, the whole thing Think is Ocean's Eleven, but with guns. I, well, it's more supposed to be like the hangover meets okay. like the wire or, yeah. or, or, or like the or the unit oh, or something like okay. that. Right. So that's the concept. So I start watching it and I'm about two and a half minutes in and realize this is as bad as that pitch is. Really? Like it's it's the gag wears off real quick. So the whole concept is they think they accomplished the mission. And they've got, as they referred to it, the rest of Uncle Sam's war chest to spend. Okay. So they think they've accomplished the mission and they're in Vegas. So the team agrees, hey, we're going to burn the rest of our operational funds on a party in Vegas. So they get. Must be September fucking 20th. So (laughs) they get (laughs) obliterated. Yeah. And I mean, they're like, they bought, we bought the purest Molly in Vegas, which still doesn't say much. Uh, (laughs) And, you know drinks they rent a camel like this whole party right and then lo and behold finds out that the bomb that they diffused and was isn't actually the bomb there's another bomb and now they're all still fucked up from the party but the mission's back on so you have this whole trying to operate all fucked up yeah this is a series or a movie it's a series it's eight episodes and they're all an hour long a piece okay wow and uh i'm trying to muscle through it because now i've started and i'm like are you going to pull up the 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 preview? Uh, I was just going to pull up the basics. But it did get to a point where, and by the way, they found the the knockoff version of all the major stars that they couldn't afford. So like, by the way, the main operator guy, the team leader is this guy, Nick Zano is the actor, whose name is Chad McKnight. Wow. 
he 100 acts like a chad and they only refer to him as mcknight and the way they phrase it it also always sounds like they're calling him midnight but look at this look at the knockoff version of like brad pitt and all there's like right? we couldn't afford the real ones <laughs> see tom so, owl yeah so but there is a scene where there is an exorbitant amount of dicks in this show like just and so this dude terrence terrell if it's his real dick, fucking more hats off, sir. Because that shit is weaponized. Hanging heavy, huh? Uh, yeah. Till the dude, <laughs> Just a fucking till the dude puts what appears to be a milk frother into the tip of his dick and they show it actually like. Like one of the ones is you turn it. Like, the, 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 yeah. Oh. Except for when you turn it on, these little blades pop out and it <laughs> spins. So they shut it down and they literally show him inserting this thing into this man's fucking 10 inch dick through the fake. urethra and they show the whole fucking thing. And I was like, this was unnecessary. Well, yeah, I'm not <laughs> like this. This sounds like a fucking nightmare. Uh, and it's the whole. And then, but a lot of it is. Uh the reactions to the drugs and you can tell that everybody that wrote it has never done those drugs. They've just heard the stories of what it's like <laughs> to do those drugs. So you've got the guy that's like on a bunch of silly. He's like, there's a gremlin that's following me around. And I'm like, that's not actually how this works, <laughs> but sure. Because uh, apparently the helicopter pilot from the air force, who's this Asian guy that doesn't drink smoke or eat fat or anything gets obliterated on psilocybin but can still make fucking thousand meter shots with this bolt gun as a, but, pi as a pilot. It, yeah. It's and so oh, I'm like, it tracks. So if you go into it with the, like scroll down and tell me this isn't probably shoot. Look up, at right? that picture. Do you hear about, tell the me they didn't try to make this motherfucker look like Brad Pitt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you speak of psilocybin? Do you hear about the guy with Alaska <laughs> airlines? He was a jump seat pilot and, uh, he was all, f all fucked up on mushrooms. And he tried to kill the engines mid-flight. What? Yeah. Oh, I did hear about this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know why. It didn't end well for him. It did. He's in jail for the rest of his life. Yeah, he's fucked. Uh, I think we talked about this because we were like, why didn't the other pilots shoot him? No, no, no this about was a the different pilots thing. that can carry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is another story about a pilot that can carry. Luckily, there was one on that flight and was like, ah, sit the fuck down high speed. What was it, 2018 <laughs> or 2019 where that dude stole that alaska airlines yeah oh and did the loop he, he did a, did a and, fucking and he's like loop i'm gonna do a barrel roll yeah. Yeah. like the I mean, best it's i funny just funny that you bring this up because michelle just saw this for the first time yeah. it was like oh, 2018 I, it's, making it's, it's making its, it's making its way back around. i just yeah. saw the audio video that they put together for it yeah and the, it has the actual like there's like, like a 10 minute video oh my yeah. god that covers it the it's guy's super polite the whole time he's not like a dick even the the but like he crashed it onto an island, right? Yeah, he 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 knows downs on purpose, but yeah. he uh because they haven't been chased by like an F-18. Oh yeah. And uh and the other pilots talking to him and stuff like that. And they're but, like, I think I'm gonna do a barrel roll. Can this thing do a barrel roll? And the pilot's like, I don't recommend it. It's so like he did it. I'm gonna do he did he, he clears the he, bay by like 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. And the guy, the, the other pilot. Like, I didn't think were, I was gonna make that. The other pilots the other, were like, <laughs> we didn't think you were gonna do that. And they were like, he actually pulled it off. And then they have, didn't he learn how to fly through a flight simulator? Yeah, yeah. 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 Microsoft flight simulator. But and they were like, he's a real good dude. Like his, like he just he was lost. It. He was in his thirties and he just was in a bad place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he says it all, and he's like, oh, look, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm about know, to let some people he's down. Like, I'm gonna let a lot of people down. These are the, and so he does that barrel, and then he does the full loop and clears the water. And he's like, I didn't think I was gonna make it. And the, <laughs> like, I thought that was going to be my last pilot trip, actually man. calls back to air control and is like, holy shit, he did it. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he cleared the water by like 10 feet. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was nuts. And then, uh, but, uh, and he's like, I've never seen the, whatever that mountain range is. Mount Rainier. Uh, he, so he flies Mount Rainier, yep. but then he'd never been out to the, the range that's out. Oh there. yeah. And so he's flying it. And then, uh, but he like calls back and he's like, Hey, this Island, is there anybody on it? And, da, 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 da. and they're like, no. And he's like, okay. And then he just fucking nosed it down and fuck. Cause he wow. didn't want to hurt. Anybody. Right. Right. But, I mean, if you're going to suicide, man, that's pretty. Epic. Yeah. And, but he asked too, he's like, if I land this it. thing, I, I go to jail forever. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they were like, yeah, they're yeah. like, we'll talk about that later, man. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. He's like, mm, that was kind of a rhetorical question. Yeah. yeah. I already knew the answer. To so that. he does like a, he does a, like several barrel rolls and he flips. And then we're talking like a four prop, like, yeah, this is like a. It was a. Full, it was a plane. Seven thirty-seven. No, 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 no. It's a four-prop uh, regional, 
and yeah. they use them. They use them in Alaska because they can they can land on shorter runways. They got the one. It has two seat, like two seats one side, one seat on the oh, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. one of those. Oh, it's okay. one of those regionals that are like you have to walk out on the tarmac to get on. For sure, um, that's how we got it. It's not a. It's not a. <laughs> Bush plane. It's well, bigger he, than that, but it's it will land on like really short runways. He worked at the airport. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was like a, like a baggage guy or, or something. Or whatever. Yeah. What what they nickname him? The Sky. Yeah. Oh, it's a two prop. It's a turbo prop. Yeah. So, um, but he stole it, and it's a. Uh, but apparently, the guy was like a really nice guy. Yeah, but, good uh, dude. Just wasn't a bad place. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what though, fucking, I mean, if you're gonna do it, fucking lawn darting yourself after you fucking. Do a barrel roll. That's the fucking way to do it. Like, you're not getting better. I'm that. I'm willing to like, bet that whoever the manufacturers that aircraft is like, well, we didn't think it could do this. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers at Boeing scratching their head. They're like, yeah, what the like, fuck is this, the- man? <laughs> that was wild. What's what's his nickname? They nicknamed him the Sky Raider or Sky something. I don't know. I don't know. The don't Sky know. It thief. is an old story. We are not, this is not like breaking news. The Sky this happened thief. fucking years ago. And, uh, but yeah, he was like a baggage. Yeah. Richard guy. Russell. That was his name. And, uh, <laughs> it's fucking, yeah. Check in, okay. check in your buddies. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right? The thing is that like all the, all the videos and stuff you see of this guy or any pictures and stuff that they put up of him, it's like, it's always a smile. He was apparently known as like a practical joker and like always liked to have a good time and shit. And then you yeah, can tell he's kind of a smart ass from the audio. Yeah. You but, know it's, I mean? it's, but like, you know, like that's the thing guy. is that yeah. it, it is a, the ones that smile a lot are probably the ones that need to be checked on the most. It's like, true, man. Uh, <laughs> <why> we, <laughs> we, we preach that shit. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird world. Yeah. They say, you know, they're painting walls, right? <laughs> I was trying to circle that in. <laughs> Redecorate the room. Uh, so uh, when do you guys think World War III is going to start? I don't know. They're all fucking. Well, now they're all fucking pussy. Let's have a ceasefire. We don't need well, a with well, the ceasefire went away when Hamas did a, a terrorist attack in. Um, I think it was in Jerusalem. They said that was unrelated. Was what the fuck? Rogue, rogue. Uh, I don't care. Rogue yeah. members of Hamas. Well, then, yeah. then maybe oh. your organization should work on its communication skills. <laughs> yeah. Like, because yeah. it's still, that's like, oh, we're sorry this unit from the United States decided to do their mission on their own. Right? Yeah. Like, like no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's not. No. Well, that happened once. And the guy got caught. When? Who? There was an SF guy. That, it's called The Rock. They made a movie about it. Yeah. No, there was, there was an <laughs> SF guy that, uh, <laughs> Did some rogue mission and got caught uh, a couple years ago. Yeah, but it wasn't like in the middle of a ceasefire. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it was definitely in a foreign country and he got. Happy. Like imagine being the dude. dude. Didn't you see uh fucking uh, what the hell's the movie? The, no, uh, it's a movie. The <laughs> award winning one. That's dog shit. About oh, that EOD. What about EOD? Oh, we got two. Oh. <gasps> Oh shit! How did that happen? Spinning it. Uh, Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker. Yeah, didn't you see that when he jumped out the wire and went on his own mission? That happens all the time. I mean, we all know that that was the most accurate and number one military movie. That's just because he had had the right clearance to go do his own shit. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. That's that's what they do. (laughs) You know, like I mean, yep. When you go over there, they give you what's called the Rambo badge, and you (laughs) just go and handle shit. My favorite part of that movie is that he's at home. And he fucking like calls somebody and he's like, send me back. And I'm like, that's not how this works. That's not how any like, of that you know, works. Yeah. yeah. Send me back. Or like, or like when like him and his fucking like E3 or no, like a fucking full on fist fight and beating the shit out of each other. No. <laughs> like that's, nah, nah. That's a problem. Like, you know, I don't know. That whole fucking movie bothered me. The only thing that was accurate was the shitty Haji uh, uh, fucking movies. That was that was accurate, like all the little shitty DVDs that were burnt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the accurate. bootleg shit. Yeah, yep. that was accurate. I remember the first. I still time have I, some of those. Me too. <laughs> I remember the first time I watched uh, Dawn of the Dead. I was watching Dawn of the Dead, and some dude got up in the middle of the fucking theater and walked in front of the camera. <laughs> I, I remember. Was like, hey, <laughs> I remember the first time I ever saw tranny porn was in Iraq. Mister, Mister, that freaky, one of the uh, one freaky, of the freaky. our um, interpreters got. Which and is, I, I remember we were sitting as a squad. I'll die on this hill. It's less gay than regular porn. We were sitting, <laughs> we were sitting as a squad, and somebody put this in. It's like, oh, I just got this, and they put it on the TV in the squad in the squad room. And like, I walked by, like in the room, and there's like eight dudes sitting there watching this, and I'm like, 
fucking I can't say it. <laughs> you know what I was saying. Redacted. Yeah. And uh, as I walked by the TV, it pans from this chick with, or this dude with his tits out down to his <laughs> dick. And I was like, pause this and rewind it. And they're like, what? And I'm like, trust me. And I walked out of the room and I went and got fairy and I brought fairy back in. And I'm like, fairy, you're going to check out this chick. She's so fucking hot. <laughs> and it's paused on, on his face and tits. And <laughs> He's just like, oh my God. He's like, I need this disc, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they hit play and he scrolled down and everyone's like, ah, and he's like, ah, he's like, I still need this. disc. (laughs) (laughs) I'll die on the hill, man. It's less gay than regular porn. (laughs) It's true. It's extra set of tits, man. (laughs) Unless it's two trannies. Well, no, that's gay porn with tits. (laughs) You can have gay porn with ladies. But or those are dudes. dudes with tits. <laughs> it's still two of the same, so it makes it gay. There's no such thing. Still more hands than as dudes. chicks with dicks. It's only Ooh. dudes with tits. If it's okay, if it's two dudes with tits, they claim to be ladies. Is it lesbian or gay porn? Depends on how they identify. That's the view. <laughs> 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 they determined that that was cake. <laughs> <laughs> Our survey says <laughs> that is the view. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> but I'm saying if it's if it's a chromosomal woman with a transsexual woman, yes, dude with ch- dude with tits. Yeah, I think it's less gay. It's less gay. There's an extra set of tits. It's less gay than gay porn. It's. Well, by design. Hold on, no, no, no. Less gay what, what, straight porn. Hold on. What you described right there isn't gay porn. Yeah. That's, that's porn, and the dude just happens to have a set of tits. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's less gay than no, watching no, 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 regular no, it, porn. It's not gay. There's no gay involved in that. That's, it is a dude that just happens to have boobs that's banging some chicks. So you're saying, I hear you. no, I think what Mikey's saying is it's preferred porn. It's got, but there's an extra set of tits, which makes it preferred porn. To Mikey. But what does that have to do with? It makes it less gay than straight <laughs> porn. But how is it gay porn? It's not. It's not. It's so not. So then all. it's not less gay at all. It's just porn. Prefer- and the dude has tits. So is it better porn? Yes. Preferred porn. Would it be better porn? I, is that, if, if that's what you're into, we don't kink shame around here, well, bro. I'm, I'm into less gay porn. So <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you're watching, I beg to differ. <laughs> I'm not watching any of it. Actually, I don't remember the I mean, last if time you're I watching, watched porn. If you're watching porn and tuck it, touching your dick, it, then the only actual sex you're experiencing is male on male sex. But if if you're watching porn yeah. and there's a guy in the scene, it's gay. So if you're if you're watching porn, well, this, this off, goes back. You're to technically our, <laughs> only doing. Gay this sex. goes back to our to our to our conversation recently, <laughs> where it was like every I just dude, pissed a whole lot of motherfuckers yeah, off. Right, there. every dude in here. <laughs> has seen more dick yeah. and touched more dick oh, than obviously. any than woman. Than any woman possible. Yeah. It's the same kind. Now, if you but s- it's quality over quantity. If you okay. subtract one dick out of that equation, then it's gay porn. Definitely. <laughs> by, by, by time, I've probably touched dick more than a lot of people. But it's only been one <laughs> <laughs> that you know of. We didn't, we didn't specify. Hey, if I'm sleeping, it doesn't count. <laughs> Well, I think it still counts. Because if, if, <laughs> if you're watching a dude with tits fuck a chick with tits and you delete one dick, it's now just gay porn. Yeah. Yeah. But if not. So the only one touching dick in that scenario is you. Bing. Yes. <laughs> <It's>, <I'm>. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're watching porn and there's a dude involved, <laughs> is it gay? Because you're watching a dude. No. I think it's voyeurism at that point. Yeah. We went down a wrong road. <laughs> it's not gay. Not at all. I think I'm with Jazz on that. It's pretty voyeur-esque more than anything. But that's really what all porn is, right? It's just fucking. Yeah, you're just watching people fuck. Yeah. It's just you have the anonymity you know, of the screen. Mikey, you yeah. say that until you finish, and then you and understand then you what you're you watching, yourself. and you feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, fuck is wrong with me. <laughs> 
Like, that, that that was it. I had to get to that in order to get off. Like, what the, <laughs> where did my life go wrong? That's when you call the therapist. <laughs> it's like, I think I need to talk to somebody. There's some shit's going down. Yeah, I need to talk to the rapist. If you're, at, if you're at the point where there's like nine dicks and like a chick and that's what's doing it for you, yeah. call somebody. <laughs> I did have a bukkake phase for a I while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm fucking kidding. No, you're not. No, you're not. no I'm not. <laughs> I wanted to see it. I was like, look at that. What, what was a your, trooper. What was your job at the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how, old were you, how old were you and where were you real living? Board, real board <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real board. Yeah. So oh, it yeah. was more like a reality. You were like, oh, well, if this actually happened on the base right now, there'd be one chick and 10 dudes standing around. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> what happened if there was one chick right here right now? This. Yeah, that's true. We did have like one chick. She looked more like you than a chick, though. Did you only watch it on? <laughs> I'd fuck me. No, her wife was there with her. <laughs> I had two chicks and they were married. Uh, that's. Yeah. 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 It was an interesting dynamic. Right. Yeah. They were always, they were always like, can we switch shifts? No, oh, I need one of you on each shift. You can't fucking have your little date night. All right. It's not the fucking love boat, man. <laughs> he started to explain it to him and be like, no, you're here because you have a vagina and I need someone with a vagina to touch the other ones with vaginas because they won't let us because cultural issues. I can't frisk her for bombs and shit. So it's your job. And I had to explain this every fucking day. <laughs> and I was like, I understand that you and your wife get to have a weird fucking situation where you live in Afghanistan and make stupid fucking money together, but you're working fucking separate shifts. <laughs> I, was like, fuck. Like, I don't get that. I don't, I don't yeah. get any situation. People take a job. They know what the fuck the job yeah. is. And then they get to the job and go like, Oh, uh, can I have yeah, exceptions? I know oh. <laughs> the fucking job. Yeah. Like, fuck. They were both very locked on. They were both fucking awesome to work with. They were great. It's amazing what you have to explain to people. Like even in my level, I do explain vets. to people go. why you just work like in one, retail like and you have to work week, on Black Friday. Can I have this? It, like, well, no. right? Like, well, but it impacts my. Then you shouldn't have got a retail job. It like, no. Yeah. But if you work in retail, you can't not work on the busiest retail day of the year. It, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Yeah. I don't know. It's fucking weird. Just what's our time at? Uh, we're sitting probably 45. around 45 minutes. Oh, look at you. Hot damn. Fucking I. Fucking He's been counting. Internal clock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Scott. Uh, Jesse Gilmartin uh, reached out about his birthday gift he sent you. Where does that thank you, Jesse? Cigar. Quit fucking fishing. The cigar. The cigar, yes. yes. Yeah. He, uh, he said, I did pay for shipping, but no worries. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, automated. Yeah, exactly. We have nothing to we do. We don't with have that. in-store pickup, so I apologize. Yeah. He was cool about it. Uh, he said, would have sent your favorite, but, uh, but I can't just send one or I can't send just one, just a five pack. A victory seemed fitting. It Y'all was share fit. a birthday. So it's easy to remember. Oh, it's that guy. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's that guy. <laughs> no, I remember that guy. Yeah. He said, didn't want to call this year since Warfighter was closed. Honestly, he did just, call last year. Yeah. Honestly, just glad. He wished me a happy birthday part. on his happy birthday. Yeah. What can I? Yeah. yeah. Do you wish him a happy birthday back? I do. I do. I do. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we should. Uh, but yeah. he. Uh, Speaking of touching dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I gave a big thank you for him. Said if you're ever in San Antonio, stop by to share a cigar and a drink. And then I put in parentheses, you won't pay for those. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And then FTFO, and he said, more likely, I'll meet you in Nebraska. He's in Wichita. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. Oh, there might be a time I get to Wichita. Mm-hmm. So, I think he's just looking for any reason to get the fuck out of Wichita. Uh, yeah, Ooh. but I wouldn't go to Nebraska. I'd come south. I spent some time in Kansas. It was exactly what it sounds like. Yep. <laughs> it was exactly what it sounds like. Our buddy Big Jim was stationed at Fort Riley for a while. And that like hurts my it's soul. It's uh, awful. Yeah. Fort Riley is the biggest attraction in Fort Riley is there's three really sad buffalo <laughs> <laughs> in like a little pin. Yeah. And they just walk in circles. They will sell you a, a bronze coated buffalo chip while you're there. You can just take them. But like, that's how bad Fort Riley is. They're like, hey, do you want your trophy for being here? Here's a here's bronze here's a coat. bronze shit, and you're just like, <laughs> you're like yay! It thumbs, thumbs it up. I mean, it works. No. I guess. <laughs> I like know. their main drag there that goes up, it's called Custer Hill. That's the main 
road there. In Manhattan, and, Kansas. Yeah. And uh, Fort Riley has Custer Hill. It's like, so you literally named a road after a dude a who general. led okay. all of his people <laughs> to death and lost. It like, wasn't the, even in Kansas. Why the fuck is it in Kansas? That happened it's the, that shitty. Big, little big one in Montana. Because <laughs> it's that shitty there. They were like, how can we make this worse? Oh, I know. Only name shit after losers. Like that's a, <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you check out Chateau Hitler and <laughs> the Napoleon fucking amphitheaters right down here. That's fun. It's so, tiny. Fucking horrible. <laughs> okay. No, I was there at St. John's Military Academy in Topeka. Ooh. I did a semester there because I was a shithead. <laughs> and uh, that sucked. How old were you when you? Uh, 12 or 13, oh, I think. Nice. Yeah. Maybe maybe a little younger than that. I'm about ready to send one of my kids somewhere like that. I remember I got in a fight with a dog. I got attacked by a dog and I had like a guide on. And I got attacked by a dog in the middle of like a run. And I fucking had to fight a dog with a guide on. And nobody jumped in to help me. <laughs> like everybody was like, fuck that. It's got teeth. I'm like, motherfucker. And I'm sitting here trying to fight a dog with a fucking guy dog. Were you looking for a whole lot of loyalty out of the shitheads that got sent to a military <laughs> academy? At the time, I would hope. <laughs> I was like, fucking hell, we There's out. There's a reason they're all there. And it's because they're not members of a community. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. Yeah, you we know that for all of us dog. that went through training. The whole purpose of fucking basic or boot or whatever the fuck you want to call it is to get you to stop thinking about yourself and think about everybody else cool thing was is the next time i ran that same route that dog got out and ran right next to me he's like sup yeah <laughs> it was like he was like you're my guy now hey <laughs> like, had to find like, out yeah. and, uh, i was like all right you know that's why they put the little pointy in on the guide on right yeah for stabbing dogs sure i yeah. thought it was to fit in that little fucking base i hit him with it yeah yeah i was trying to but he was wiry <laughs> <laughs> it was like a german shepherd man he was fucking it was a wild ass dog but it was just like a fucking stray that just roamed oh, the area. Since we're talking about guide ons, you have a story about when you may have stolen or gotten <laughs> stolen. A guide on. Many, many. That's how one. Uh, I'll tell you my most recent one. Oh. Driving around Randolph Air Force Base. <laughs> Not that fun. <laughs> Maybe six, eight months ago. I'm with a buddy of mine who's a pilot at the time. It was about a year ago. And uh, we drive by and just unsecured out in the middle, fucking everybody. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll be right back. I'm like, <laughs> I really want to take that gun. And he's like, you won't. And I was like, no, <laughs> now I'm going to take that gun on. <laughs> so I went up and snatched it. And uh, notice how the officer wouldn't go do it, but he'd say that you won't. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, we br I brought it back to his uh, fucking squadron that it's in their fucking bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was only like six or eight months ago. Nice, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a big fan of stealing guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 good fun. Yeah. Well, it is. It, it, what what upsets me about stealing guidons is when somebody's like seriously butthurt about it. Where like UCMJ comes involved. Yeah, like fuck you. Yeah, we, yeah, that's fucking. Dumb. We almost had you, a, UCMJ should be. It should be involved for the guy that let the unsecured guide on. Right, not the guy that stole the guide on. It's bullshit. We almost had a uh, unit on unit brawl at Fort Campbell, but it was our platoon against a unit of cooks. Um, I'll take that. So one, I'll one, take that fight. One, one of my, our cooks were badasses. No, it wasn't our cooks. Okay. It was in, in the engineers. Oh, perfect. Um, and uh, one of our guys was banging one of the chicks in the engineer barracks and he was leaving one night and uh, was walking out of the barracks and the guide on was just there. Well, that's fun. And there was nobody around, and he was just like, fuck it. That's when it's called that's called a yoink. Right. So yeah. he he comes back to the barracks, which, which is his, the opposite of a yeet. With this guy down. Agreed. And obviously all of us are like, oh, this is game on. By the way, we now need to have 24 hour guard shift uh that we're volunteering to do out of our platoon, the people that are living in the barracks. On because their guide on. On theirs and ours, because we know that somebody from them is coming over. Right. For sure. And so they sent a unit over. And uh, it didn't work out how they wanted it to work out. And um, so in the process of that whole fiasco, we sent a, a, an advance party over to their barracks just, you know, to be ahead of the curve because that's what we do. And uh, some words got exchanged and there was probably, I don't know, 12 or 15 of us standing outside of their barracks and about 50 dudes came out 
And, uh, and one of our guys had their guide on and it was like, come get it. Come, <laughs> come and take it. And somebody in the barracks looking out the window was seeing this go down and called the MPs and like eight MP cars showed up and there's 12, 15 of us <laughs> with a guide on and like 50 of them out front. And we're all like, what's up? And the MPs were just like, Secure hey guys, guy listen. On, bro. <laughs> They're like, we know we know what's going on. Gear we understand gift, man. <laughs> that uh, you know, there, this is just rivalry in between units and blah blah blah. Um, but we'd really appreciate it if you gave the guide on back to them. And we were like. Yeah, no, that's not happening. No, and they, they have to come get it. And they're like, either that or you can come get it. They, can't were, you? They, and they were literally like, if you don't get that back, we're arresting all of you uh, for theft of government property. And we're like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem I have with it is that I think things like guide on theft and all that kind of stuff. It it's it's. It's healthy it's for the, the military. Flag. Like if I was one of the MPs that showed up, I'm like, okay, you guys have, whoa, whoa, let's say 15 people. Okay. You get your 15 best winner yeah. gets the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so like, were you, were you at the field problem? It might've been before you where we were out in the back 40 and we stole another platoons guide on. I think I was there. For, I think I just got to the unit. I for think that so. One. It had to be yeah, yeah. right but around. I think that the stuff's time. healthy, and the, and the reason being is that it instills pride. I it can't remember like, who stole morale. Pride. Did I steal that one? No, I feel maybe. like I might have. I was new, so I didn't get told a lot. I've stolen a lot of them. Yeah, I had yeah. a clerk. I had a company clerk who was a fucking gangster man. He fucking drilled through the bottom of it and had a lock. And had and like our fucking guide on thing was concreted to the fucking <laughs> to the pad because. Our company office was in the bottom of the barracks. Yeah. Uh, this particular company. And so he would have it and he would fucking pin that bitch and lock it. So somebody would come up to snatch it. It'd be like, and he'd be like, I got you, bitch. And he'd go out there and fucking bum rush them, <laughs> tackle the fuck out of them, whip their ass and hold them there. It'd be like, hey, first sergeant. First sergeant come out and be like, this motherfucker got another one. <laughs> was like, he was a gangster about it. That was my boy Joe Telez, man. Joe was good with that shit. It was funny as hell. So I was at a, uh, well, so we did a, I got invited to go to 101st Ball. Oh, uh, this is like a year ago, right? Where I stole that hit, 101st sign right there. Hit the, the button. Hit the button. What, what are we doing? Our balls were fucking awesome because of that guy, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they were because of that guy. <laughs> so I go to the, I go to this, uh, it was a dining in and, uh, a whole formal thing. Somebody, so third battalion, three, two, seven got disbanded. Yeah. I think that's what you said. Yep. Got, no, got, did no, got disbanded. Yeah. Really? And yeah. so we got invited. So they had the battalion colors. Well, one of the veterans stole the battalion colors. Nice. Right. And so I get it. I get it. I was, I was messaging with this guy. I wasn't at the event, but I was messaging with so this guy through the whole time. And Scott, and then Scott gets back and he's like, somebody stole the colors. And I had no idea. And he's like, it was. it was this guy in the picture. And I saw the picture and I pulled out my message thread and I'm like, this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so in, in the army, do you get, are you guys' battalion colors the same thing as like ours is where it's like an army flag with like streamers? Yes. Okay. All of the, all the streamers. Got it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, this yeah. guy stole. <laughs> He's right. And I'm getting hit up by the guy that's organizing the whole event. He's like, some asshole fucking stole this. And I'm like, well, I said, that sucks. I laughed. You know, I'm like, it's funny because when our battalion disbanded, literally the, so we got taken over by Arista battalion. They threw all of our shit in the dumpster, all of our history, all of our bullshit. They threw it all in the dumpster. Right. Mm, and asshole. so I'm like, I understand why this guy stole the battalion colors. I get it. Like, I understand. Right. Well, anyway, I think they ended up getting them back and whatever. And now like they, they're, we're part of their history now, but back in the day when, right when it got, we got disbanded, they fucked us over. Yeah. Cause we were coming off OAF three or OAF one. Like we we're coming off that. We had a lot of history. They, yeah. They fucking shit on all of us, right? Well, yes. And so I stole the the second one there behind that is the. Yeah. Yeah. So I stole that, but that's not anything. That would have just got thrown away. But those are all my guys, right? And so I didn't have the heart to tell him I stole that when he was, when the guy was looking for the battalion colors. But uh, yeah. And so, and then we went to another reunion and I walk in. And this guy's like totally trying to guard the battalion colors. Well, I'm standing in a, in our battalion, old battalion area, 
and the battalion colors are back in the conference room and i'm standing there and i hear him coming down the hallway and i have my i have it in my hand like i'm gonna steal it when he walks around the corner and i'm like you know i have that guilty <laughs> look on my face like oh shit you know but uh, yeah that's funny so but that should be a thing Guide on stealing should be a goddamn thing. And I hope that and there shouldn't be any punishment. For there it. shouldn't be any oh, punishment. Man, it's it's all in good fun. It, or reverse it, it and start adding streamers to somebody's guide on. Like go down to your local sew place that'll make patches and sew all your shit and have streamers made and get one that says like cuddling and just add it to their guide <laughs> on <laughs> and see how long it takes them to notice. That would be amazing. Look, <laughs> just go to like the battalion. And they're, they're good at just, you get this, this is cuddling. What the fuck? <laughs> they're going to notice because guidons don't have streamers, so they're going to notice that right away. Well, that makes it even better. It that, makes it even better. That makes yeah. that that means that your shit got stolen. I yeah. think that every time your guidon gets stolen, you the, whoever add stole it stream. should be able to fucking you put, their put streamer the streamer on. and put it back. Yeah. Fucking a. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. But I think I think once a guide on is stolen, right? That, that's company level, right? Yeah. At that point, the company commanders have to fucking solve it. It's not the guy who stole it. It's not the guy who let it get stolen. I said we let the first sergeants fight. Either way, right? <laughs> first sergeants are, are, are company commanders. Yeah. It should be their problem at that point. I'd love to see two COs just show up and be like, "All right, we got to settle this guy." Don't yeah. Thing. Pugil sticks or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. Yeah. You ever seen Heartbreak Ridge when Gunny Highway and the uh, Major go at it? Fucking there hate you that go. movie. That's fucking what most army guys do. <laughs> it's uh they they leave out the fact that in Grenada that the army was there. <laughs> they leave out that fact. No, that's not what I hate. <laughs> um the uh, combat town in there. You know what my favorite I've done a lot of shit in that combat my, town. My favorite <laughs> military movie growing up was was Tank. Have you ever seen the movie Tank? It's been a year. Where the sergeant major has his own Sherman tank. Yeah. And then has to like go on the run with his kids in the Sherman tank. Because they're throwing him under the bus for something. I don't remember the details, but oh, Tank, man. that's a good fucking movie. If you haven't seen Tank, I watch seen Tank. That. Speaking fucking of Ridge you. movies, you know the only other fucking, I fucking hate Hacks on Ridge. I didn't even watch it. I hate that I don't, movie. I don't remember That's that. the one about That's the, the one conscientious with, objector. They were fucking Spider-Man as a conscientious objector, so they make him a medic. Oh, I have seen that one. That one wasn't too bad. I don't know. I hate that movie. Do you, do you hate it because of who the actor was? I hate it because of the way they portrayed it. Okay. Or I, 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 There's not a fucking unit they, on the planet that would take a guy who isn't willing yeah. to pull the trigger no. to combat. And <laughs> that, that, I, I don't unless like, it's the they, chaplain. They set that movie up to where he, he gets some moral victory and is the hero of the fight because he wouldn't fight. And it's like, well, it's he, war. And it, like, I don't, <laughs> so in other words, you're in the fucking way. Yeah. You're in the way. <laughs> my, some of my so fucking Corman, yeah, the I, best I think, war fighters I ever knew. I, I think that, I don't that story, he, he might've been in the way leading up until the time when he wasn't. And he did what the rest of the unit wouldn't do. Yeah. Like as like, a, they were tired from fighting. As a uh, honestly though, um, a medic probably doesn't need to have a rifle. Well, for a long time they didn't carry one. Really? Yeah. So for a long time they 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 wore the cross and it was supposed to be the whole. It was so it was the red cross, uh, the white field. That's it, just yeah. And Cor nobody shoots. Uh, and, and, and and you maybe, just you don't Corman shoot the medics. Pistols. And so it was it was just understood on both sides that the combatants fight and if the medic shows up to you just you don't shoot the medic and nobody did it on either side like yeah. we didn't we didn't shoot theirs they didn't shoot ours you just you left the medics alone as a sniper i would totally shoot a medic the <laughs> roe has changed <laughs> so but now our uh, medics care when, and we call okay, them combat when's the last medics. time you saw like, a medic on the other side well they were civilian ambulance in iraq that picked up the guys yeah and i couldn't that makes you a down. combatant yeah <laughs> that, yeah, they weren't in the military. At the, yeah. That, yeah, they weren't even, like uh, well, Red either, Cross. I'm fucking taking them out. <laughs> either, either were the guys that we were fighting. They weren't in the military. Yeah, I was no, like, you're right. Certain right. seats, like what? But no, they literally rolled up in an uh, Iraqi ambulance to pick up the guys. Sure. So I, you can't shoot those guys. Like that would just make me an and asshole. So yeah. When it was conventional warfare, <laughs> and that's the thing is that I've never fought conventional. Right, and that's the thing is that none of us. Not no, we Korea. did for like three days. <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> the first three days we got no Iraq. We have not seen <laughs> they were uniform military I, were they? warfare yeah. since they had the Korea. green fucking, since Korea. Yeah, yeah. that was the last Republican conventional guard. war. That was that was true force on force. The guy in the donkey cart was not in right. uniform. No, he was not because <laughs> there was there, that was yeah. day four. 
So, <laughs> so we haven't seen conventional warfare in a very, very long time. And so a lot of the ROEs changed. And yeah, now all of our medics carry rifles. And ours one of my favorite videos. Right, an M4 and an M9. Yeah, the problem with that, though, is when the medic's trying to do medic shit and he's got this fucking M4 slung yeah. and it's yeah. fucking hitting the guy in the fucking but if you head. Guys, have you ever seen that video of the medic that takes one to the plate and it knocks him down and then he pops back up and still goes and renders aid and takes another one to the plate and then pops back up and drags the dude behind the car? Jesus. And, well, shit like that is where the rumor came around that the Americans were unkillable because they kept fucking putting rounds into dudes so that it would... Because they had never seen body armor. Right. Yeah. And these dudes were still getting up. Apparently that medic, because he took the two rounds, had like four broken ribs and still drug those dudes like out of, I was like, oh, holy gangster. fuck. Yeah, like, see, fucking like fuck, that, I mean, God damn it. Like something like that should be Medal of Honor fucking. Yeah, but see, we don't do that shit. We don't. It, well, those guys, well, it's like. No, hold on. What rank was he? There you go. <laughs> I think that guy was a five. Well, the other thing was, is a lot of those guys in like the first 18 months. It was just considered like oh, you're just it, your it job. was the, that was your job. Yeah. Well, it like, is their job. But it is, but well, instead still. of giving them like an actual award, they got their CF and B. Yeah, which is yeah. which to a lot of those guys means more than the. It probably does. Hey, oh, absolutely. It's the same thing with like a yeah, CIB but, for a grunt. Yeah, but that, uh, that or a CIB or, or a car or whatever isn't giving you a monthly fucking stipend like the Medal of Honor does. No, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, well, it depends. My first team well. leader, <laughs> my first team leader had transferred. I guess mine do. And he was, he was 25th ID and was one of the walk-ins, like the guys that literally walked across the border yeah. and like came in. Yep. And he got a bronze star because he was originally put in for like one of the congressional levels. I can't remember what the, not the medal of honor, but the. Like a distinguished service cross or something. I can't remember which one it was. But he got only, downgraded to a bronze star. There's only, this dude, there's only three above the bronze star. Yeah. This guy got. So his squad went in, his whole squad got wiped up, but him and one dude, and he put this dude on his back, took his combat load and fought off what they described as a platoon of insurgents and extracted this dude through like three miles of enemy territory back to safe space. And he got da, 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 a bronze star and they downgraded him to a bronze star. Was he a Marine? No, he's army. <laughs> that sounds very Marine. He was army. <laughs> no, it's and, all uh, rank. I, yeah, yeah. I read the citation. And you're reading this thing going like, I've read MOH citations that don't yeah. have this thing. I'm reading the citation. And it said, uh, so this Bronze Star is being awarded for for duties or uh, for actions conducted uh, for standard duty operation. And it was like, nope. If you're like the last survivor and yeah. carry a dude three miles. And at some point, uh, so he had fired all of his round, picked up the dude, took all of his combat load reloaded his weapon system and extracted this dude. I was like, and got a bronze star because of it. And I, it, he was it was an amazing NCO. When I met him, uh, he was an E6. And this all happened. He was an E4, walked in. And that was when the 25th, they all like got dysentery and like fucking uh, like were shit that. themselves camp, on the way in. Camp so. diarrhea, bro. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And, uh, we had a fly fly up your butthole. So. It's the worst fucking and, uh, feeling on the planet. Uh, had, no, <laughs> I've never had that happen actually. No. No, what oh, happened to all of us, man? Oh, I was wearing <laughs> I was wearing J list when I had dysentery. So, uh. but they were talking about the whole like, and you were walking to the point that it like dried on your legs, and it dried out to the point where it flaked off as you kept yeah. marching and shit. I've Fucking been there, gross. Yeah, and, uh, totally been there. So, but he was an E four when all. So we did this as a specialist, and extracted the suit and got a bronze star because of it. When I'm an amazing NCO, one of the best team leaders I'd ever had in my life, and. But that dude, that was a motherfucker that could fucking eat dental floss and shit Constantino. Boy, I could, I, I, I could read, hard. I could read some Bronze Star citations that don't mean shit. I got, and then you hear that story got, though, and you're like, I got an Arcom because I was an E5. Yeah, my squad leader got a Bronze Star because he was an E6. Yep. Yeah, and I can fucking on paper show you the difference of what I've done versus well, what he did. <laughs> your, your, yours, has, yours, your, your Arcom has a V on it though. His, his Bronze Star had a V. No, oh, really. And he didn't do fuck all. Well, like, because I got a name. I don't. I honestly don't think he fired a single round that. Deployment. He said a V on it. Was the it bronze star recipient had a v. bronze star? The guy it. that I was talking yeah. about. I got. Fuck, I got. Man. I got wrote up. Oh, if it got downgraded from a fucking silver star or a fucking distinguished service cross, it's been better at least. Have I a think. V on I it. think yeah. he had been put in for a DSC, and they downgraded him all the way to a fucking bronze star because they said it was just part of the mission. I mean, it, it happened to me. I got put in for a bronze star, and I got a navy comma. But a v. the thing was, is that that guy stayed yeah. in. And then, and then later he, it got upgraded. He but. went to PSYOP um, and man, what a dude. And what was awesome about him is that because he transferred in and became a team leader, he went to all of us that were PSYOPers and was like, okay, 
for the next six months, you guys are just going to teach me what I need to do. And I was like, motherfuck. It like, and then unfortunately he got promoted. Unfortunate for me. Yeah. Cause he was, he was so fucking good, but I mean, I couldn't be happier for him, but Basis. what an NCO there was him. And so there was that guy and there was another NCO that I tried to model myself after. And, uh, no, I'm just killing bottles today. Uh, but that NCO, if you were an E4, when he would talk to you for like coaching and stuff like that, or even to like give you direction, every E4 he called Sergeant. And and I asked him about it once and I was like, why do you do that? Well, he was like, thank you. I am assuming that anybody that's an E4 wants to be a Sergeant. So I will treat them as such because we need to train what they're going to be. And I was like, that's weird. It, but at a belligerent Lance Corbel. But everybody that was underneath him, they all went to the board. Like every single one of them went after the stripes. And it was, it was, it was outstanding leadership. I so, sent all rare. of my guys to the board as soon as I could. And I caught so much shit for it. Oh, were you a two year guy? Well, it, were you I didn't good? give a fuck. No, like, no, no, no. If they'd been in two years, if they qualified to go to the board, yeah, yeah, they, fucking, they went to the board. They put the package yeah. together. Yeah. That's the way it needs to be. You guys do it a little different than us. Uh, That's true. For 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 sergeant, it's it's a combination of cutting score is what we call it. So each MOS gets a specific score. Yeah, ours is points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ours is points and and board based. Yeah, so, so you don't have to, to. We don't do a board until E six for us. So, so ours, with, you have to have a certain number of points, okay. and then those points qualify you to go to the board. But then you have to go to the board, and you have to put a packet together, and, and that packet is essentially a it's a giant resume. It's like an I love me book. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you're turning everything in. But then you get points based on your board also. Yep. But, but then, then they you're by MOS, they have a promotable point system. So let's say I don't know what the max is. I can't. Well, remember. then it gets more complicated than that because if you are a if you're a like a rare MOS, they can do what do they call it when it's below there's like that sub table. It's like a sliding scale. So it's like if the standard to make E5 was let's just pick a number, let's say 350 points. But you're not, but you're a, what do they call it? An understrength or whatever MOS. Oh, yeah, yeah. Undermanned. Uh, then they, there's a, there's a sub level that's like, okay, but we're undermanned and you only have 270 points. We're promoting at 270 yeah, instead yeah. of the 350. So but they'll. Every, every rank or every MOS has a different system based on the numbers of slots open for that yeah, next our, rank. Ours is the same. And there's times where they're like, points are maxed. And like you can't get promoted. That's because you have there's so too many, many people. Especially yeah. when they stop you, loss. You see that in a right? lot in when, when big they, MOSs like the infantry. When they stop what? loss, then everybody who is gonna get out is still in. So you, you're it way bo it bottlenecks. Yeah, yeah you, you have too many E5s. I can't remember the name and, of the yeah. fucking term. But there's a term Under for the hand? No, 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 no. For the when you're promoted below the point value. And I can't there's a I like mean, a term for it. I can't we we, we have that is. we have that it's called below zone for us. Um, like, cause you, cause you have like promotion zone above zone, meaning you got passed over whatever promotion it's, yeah, zone it's same, below zone. same basic principle. And, so yeah. you saw it a lot more in the, the infantry. It was brutal because That's there's, there's just so people. many 11 yeah. series guys that it's, it's really, so you, it's almost always max point and stuff like that. Well, in wartime it was, cause there was just I so say it many was like 798 people. was max yeah. or something like that. Yeah, well, I remember when, but when, then you do bullshit things. Like you'd have a guy that was like. Well, well I, I have 265 points. And it's like, well, they're promoting it 300 points. So your next week, you were going to sit through all of these fucking online courses and you're yes. just going to slam points. What were those you, online courses called? E, uh, e Army U? No. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. But they were. No, that was the college system that they yeah, put yeah. out. And then they told infantry guys, you uh, can't do it. No, it was the, <laughs> it was the e-learning system. And so you could get all these like. And there were, it was all AK, these, AKO. AKO. It was, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I used to have to take, Army a, knowledge I, online. I used to have to take yep. AKO classes so AK, for when I was on average. AKO. Yeah. Yeah. But it would, you could rack points. courses. You could rack points. They were bullshit. So there was like, there was literally. How I became a JTAC. <laughs> fucking marina we no they the had thing. stupid shit like yeah. there was seer 101 so you could send through somebody an online seer course yeah, and that, it was like that what? shouldn't count oh, <laughs> when, when i when i made e5 they I, like the way the old army used to work is like i still have like deployment orders that have like 150 people social security number not redacted yeah, yeah. like Oh, that, that's the old army, right? So oh, I found a fucking platoon roster of phone numbers oh, with fucking yeah, yeah. with all their social oh, everything, yeah. yep. socials, birthdays. I was like, I can still all these bitches. When they would send, when I would send out your points and what I you shredded were, it, 
right? Mm-hmm. It, you were in a list. <laughs> it didn't just send just you. You were like, it was your name on a full page of fucking whoever's up on that promotion that time. Yep. But the, in the army, they put E5s and E6s on that same list. And it's unit based. So it's not like army wide. I just get to see all the people in my unit. And so I could see my points. Everybody else has an E5 or an E4P, what their points were. Everybody that's an E5P going for an E6, how many points that they had. I had more points as an E4P than every single E5P on that list. So as an E4 with like, I think I only had, I don't know, two and a half years in service at the at that You were time. qualified for the six. I could have made six yeah. before anybody else on that fucking list. And I was like, if I don't get fucking promoted right when, now, this is bullshit. When, yeah, but old <laughs> army, when you get, when you get army, promoted. When the promotion boards would go out and there was the fucking Army Times publication of who uh, got oh, promoted. Yeah, yeah. And yep. so like there would be the publication and you because the boards all happen at the same time. <laughs> so I have a question. And you'd open Army Times and you can go find your buddy's name or not find your buddy's that name. That was usually like, E7 or like, like So you were an E4 with, the, let's say you arbitrary number let's say you had 600 points as an e4 okay and the e5 above you had fucking 400 points okay but to make e6 it was fucking 450 so he got it or whatever but you obviously have to go the e5 first when you pick up e5 do you lose all the points that you did you have no 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 no, 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 no. or is it it's okay so So the only points that change is your board your your board pt test weapons qual yeah Yeah, if you can consistently you know you max your pt you qualify expert um, all that, all every, if, if your so skills stay the same and you don't have any new schools you went to, you, that, those standard points carry over okay. and then whatever you get on your E six board now gets added onto those. So gotcha. did you have any of the list guy? What was that university of university of Maryland university? What was Phoenix. that? Phoenix UMUC. There you go. Yep. Uh, so Univ- those were those university college of courses. Maryland, you could Maryland take. college. Those yeah. are those college yeah. courses you could take while you were in the service. Yep. So if you, we're taking all of these online fucking, or at the time you mailed them in. I knew a yeah, bullshit. I, I knew a dude who got his master's, it, right, and got you, undergrad and master's and shit. And I was like, you literally fucking nerd. Mailed it in. <laughs> so yeah. they would send you the test. You take the test, and then you mailed it back. And you had to like take it with a proctor, and yeah. it had to be like an E six or uh, so, above to so proctor let's say your you do that, exams. Yeah, because college credits count for points. Yeah, same number. So let's say you you did that and you earned. Again, we're picking arbitrary numbers. 200 points worth of college credit. Yeah. yeah. And you made E5. And they went on your last PT test and your last qual and all that kind of stuff. So sure. aggregate, you're at 380 points. So you you made board, you get E5. Now it's time for E6. The 200 that you had in college credits, static. You keep that. And yeah. then whatever other AKO courses you did. So let's say you're at 250 points. But then you fucking bomb your PT and you show up and you fuck your qual and whatever. Those points all adjust. And yeah. now you've got to go to board and all of this fucking brass is yeah. going to sit across and go like, hey, okay, so you've did some online shit, but why are you a shitty soldier? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. well, a, sir, because I have an actual job. I had a, a buddy of mine that I served with in Okinawa. We were both sergeants together. Uh, he was a LAV guy, and and uh, but we worked together. And for he'd gotten something. I don't know if it was a DUI or fucking something happened where he wasn't picking up staff sergeant like yeah. or like maybe like the board was just closed or he'd been in too long or whatever so he ended up getting out and joining the army and became a striker guy right which is very very similar you have to add an axle but whatever yeah. you know um and he became a striker guy and i ran into him when i was on aberdeen he was up there doing some fucking like course or something and i'm talking to him it's my buddy carl and uh and i was like how is it because I was, he'd gotten promoted. He was in E6 now. And I was like, how is it? He goes, dude, it's fucking, it's so fucking gay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he's like, it sucks so bad. And I'd be like, well, you, at least you got promoted, man. Like you got staff star. And he goes, yeah, but he's like, did I have to like fucking sing a song and do all this stupid shit? And I was like, you have to sing a fucking song? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck do you mean? He's like, you have to like sing like that army song and shit at these boards. And I'm like, that's so dumb. And he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like I remember I had to do I'm, I'm in Iraq when I did. My yeah, board. me too. Yeah. And yeah. I had to do like facing movements and drill and ceremony shit. And like I needed to know like you do that for meritorious boards, but I feel like I, your regular fucking I, promotions. I, need, I needed to know what was inside the truck on the top of the flagpole. On, yeah. on in a garrison yep. base. Well, it, I'm in Iraq. People are always like, "How many trucks are on the base?" Because they're, they're trying to fuck with your bearing. No, I, I, and when I you understand just, it and completely, you just, fuck, you just eyeball fuck them. You go one, and they're like, "Fuck, yeah. what's in it?" And it's like, "All right, bitch, yeah, yeah. Oh, here you go, Fucking, here it is." A book of matches, a razor blade, and a 145. Yep. I love and, it. So I and instructions for destroying the flag. So I, I almost I got I passed my board, but I got kicked out of my board. Sergeant Jan, 
Specialist Jansen. <laughs> if you were this is, this is the second go around a specialist or no, this, this is first. This is when I got my yeah. B five initially. If you were sergeant major for the day, what would you do? And I said retire because you retire at the highest rank achieved. <laughs> <laughs> they kick that I get out. I passed the board. They passed me, but I, they kicked me out. That's a the, brilliant fucking answer. <laughs> yes. The next guy, <laughs> the next guy that go in, his question was, if you were sergeant major for a day, what would you change? So they changed <laughs> the question because of my answer. Yep. I said I'd fucking retire. Yeah. What would you change? Promotion boards. <laughs> I wouldn't be singing fucking songs right now. <laughs> we just talked about the fact that none of us have seen conventional warfare. Then why are we still basing promotion on conventional duties? Like, so you know what Creed and you can do D and C? Like, what the fuck does that have to do with being able to lead men in combat right now? It doesn't. It, it, well, it's, it's, no, it, promotion boards. Okay, the whole point of a promotion board, right? We're, we're all of the age now where we would be sergeant majors or first sergeants, right? That is terrifying. Uh, E8. Right. <laughs> but the reason Co collectively, <laughs> I understand now why there's promotion boards. It's not if the they filter. answer the question yeah. correctly, it's how they present themselves. Right. It's a filter. If they're confident, if they're, you know, if, if they get all flustered talking to first sergeants and sergeant majors, then that's probably not the guy you want. Yeah, it's a right? good, it's a good filter. It, I'm not going to lie. It, it's a good filter. Whether or not they answer the questions, right? That's just like, okay, like, you have a little bit of duty to know some answers to some questions. Look, if we have, anybody, but it's all about saw, how you present. I saw a video of an army board and I had never seen one. And before they came in, like, is it the one where they put the chair on the side? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the kid comes in and, and he tries to sit down down inside of it. And they're just like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, what the fuck? And like, and then like, you could tell the kid who walked in and was locked the fuck on, just picked it up and slammed it down and yeah. sat in it and was like, what's up? And they were like, right answer. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, but I mean, that's, that's what it's about. Be yeah. able to identify the current problem, fix the problem and then drive on with the mission. Fucking and right. That's what that question. That's it, it is a question. Yeah. They are asking you a question. You are presented with, you're presented with a non-traditional situation. How are you going to handle it? And you fix the problem and then you drive on with the mission. See, he fixed the problem the army way. He's like, well, I guess this is what I have to do now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is fucked up. I adapt <laughs> to the fucked up situation. Yeah. That's just but fucking hilarious. If there's any junior enlisted guys that are listening to this and you have the chance to go to the board, here's the purpose of the board. Later in your career, right now it looks like it's all just be good at your job and do your job and da da da. As your career pony show, as your career progresses, your career will get more and more political. Boards are there to test whether or not you can handle the advanced politics as your career drives on. Because when you it, and it's all great, it's like can't wait to go to E seven takes Congress to get rid of my it, yeah because there's politics involved in your fucking job, yeah. and you need to know how to fucking handle that. You need to know how to talk to other units or other other uh, other divisions. Uh, the different lanes of responsibility and you need to be able to communicate with those other lanes and still accomplish the mission and that's all the political game and when you get up to where you've got you've got chevrons and diamonds or there's wreaths on your rank yeah. and all that kind of shit that is far more politics than it is being a good soldier and if you can't wrap your fucking head around well, that because the, by the time you get to do that your point time and get the fuck out by the time you get to that point you should already be a good fucking soul. Like, like, you know what's right. Like, you know what right looks like. Like one of the questions I got was, what's the maximum effective range of a 40 millimeter? And I replied, a 203 or a Mark 19. Good question. It was different. And the then, delivery and device then is entirely different. Instantly, they knew You're a good that I knew what I was fucking talking yeah. about. Right? You know, like, I got asked to uh, shoot a back azimuth on a compass one time during a board. <laughs> And so I just turned around and was, it was like, it was like, can you shoot a back azimuth of 180 degrees? It's like, yeah, it was my Sergeant Major. And it's, yes, I can, Sergeant Major. And he's like, do it. And I was like, <laughs> I just pointed backwards. He goes, when you're right, you're right, kid. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I, did it. I mean, it's all about confidence. They just yeah. want to see how you handle under a, it's, it's a high stress situation, right? But it shouldn't be. Yeah. If it, you, it's if you not, go in there with confidence and it's not a high stress situation. Yeah. If like, you know what you're doing, yeah, they're you, not going to, yeah, that's not, all they're, they're not going to ask you anything. You haven't, if you, if you've been paying attention, they're not going to ask you anything you shouldn't fucking know, no. yeah. but there's some stuff that never loses it. It, it, so, it. I wish you guys had been there fucking last Thursday. I was standing out front of my store cause I was on the phone 
And there was two kids in uniform that were walking through the mall to do something. They both had fucking shopping bags in the right hand. And I literally Long dropped hand. my I literally dropped my phone and went, right hand. And they both went, and they just watched <laughs> it. And I was like, and I was like, some stuff you just don't lose. But <laughs> like I, I've told you this story before, Jess. Um, I was only a PFC for one month, right? Okay. I, was, I was an E2 for one month. I got meritorious Lance Corps. I got meritorious PFC. PFC in the Marine Corps is an E2. Really? Yes. Okay. So we go private PFC Lance Corporal, right? That's E1 through three, right? So I graduated boot camp as a E1 private. I got married. I got meritorious PFC from my recruiter because I talked four dudes into joining while I was on boot leave. Asshole. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I got paid more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and when you get meritoriously promoted, you get promoted on the second of the month. Okay. So I went directly from that. Yeah, because you know they don't want to pay you. Correct. <laughs> I went directly from that to. SOI, right? After boot camp, you go to SOI and do all that. So at SOI, um, they're like, they're like, who's the PFCs and Lance Corporals? There was only like one Lance Corporal, and they're like, all right, so your guide, who's the PFCs? All right, squad leaders, or whatever. Yeah. So I was a squad leader. And I was like, all right. And they were like, hey, we're going to do a fucking board. And I didn't know what the fuck a board was because I've been in the Marine Corps for three and a half months. Right. Like, I don't know what the fuck a board is. And I was just like, okay. And I'm pretty locked on. I think I am. You know, yeah. I don't know anything, but right. I, you know, at that point in time, I'm 17 years old. I think I know what yeah. I'm doing, right? And um, it was funny because there was like, it was like three platoons worth, and they took all the squad leaders and sent us to this board, right? And we're all standing in line in a hallway, and uh, I'm like, I don't know, fourth dude in line out of like nine or so, or yeah. whatever. I'm stored in the middle of the pack, and I'm standing there, and they're like, all right, first one goes in there. They told us to put on nice camis, polish our boots, make sure we look good. I was like, all right, cool. So we go in, the first one goes in there, 10 seconds later, he's out. Next one, 10 seconds later, he's out. We're like, what the fuck is happening? We don't know. We're yeah. the fucking, I get it. It's my turn. I go in there and they're like, what are the 14 leadership traits? And I just fucking knock them out, right? It's, I remember, it's yeah. JJ did tie buckle, all right? So it's justice, judgment, sizeness, initiative, dependability, tact, integrity, bearing, and selfishness, courage, knowledge, loyalty, and enthusiasm. And I just <laughs> busted out to this first sergeant and he's like, walk outside and stand there and don't talk to anyone. I was like, all right, first sergeant. So I walk outside and I stand there and they're like, what happened? I'm like, <laughs> they're, like, they're like you can't tell a shit i'm like nope i don't know the fuck, yeah, yeah. i don't know what the fuck's happening next guy goes in 10 seconds later boom all the way out and then they're like come in here you and i go in they're like they're like looking at my paperwork and they go you got promoted this month and i was like uh yes i did and they're like you got meritorious he's like you got meritorious and promoted this month and i was like yes for sergeant he's like well, we can't fucking promote him twice on the same day, guys. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, what the fuck? And he's like, go away. So I just left. Yeah. And they're like, go back to your unit, whatever. So I go back to my platoon and I'm doing, I go back to training. Um, and uh, the next fucking, like, oh. like the next month comes around and we're getting ready to graduate. And uh, actually we're graduating. They pushed it up because of Y2K. Because even, <laughs> even the military <laughs> didn't know what the fuck Y2, was going to happen with Y2K. That's so, funny. Like I grew, so I ended up getting my fucking graduation date pushed up. So I fucking like left on the 30th of fucking December, right? And it was like right before. So I got to right before the end of the world, right? Because yeah, yeah. they didn't know what the fuck was happening. Like, go home. The world ends. Whatever. That's <laughs> kind of what happened. Yeah. So they, they let us take leave. We all went in the hole in our leave because we're like, we don't have leave. And they're like, we don't care. Fucking go. So we all, I, I got like eight days of leave that I went back home for right after fucking that. So I was like, I was just home a month ago. This is great. Um, and uh, as I'm about to leave, they're like, Faye, come here. And I was like, yeah. And they walk over and they fucking pin me, fucking bust them in. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And they're like, you're Lance Corporal. And I was like, how? And they're like, remember that board you did last this earlier in the month? And I was like, yeah. They're like, you won. And I was like, oh. They're like, here's the thing, though, is you're not going to get paid until the second of next month. So they had to fucking right. bump my shit up to the second of January. So uh, when I tell, I used to bitch at my Marines, I was, especially PFCs, if they were fucking up, I'm like, bitch, I was a PFC in the 90s. I was. It was December of 99. But I was. <laughs> <laughs> For one month. For one month, I was a PFC. And uh, then I got meritorious to promote Lance Corporal, and it was a whole thing. Um, so when I show up to my unit, yeah, one question, right? They, they only asked one. That's awesome. It was because I just happen to know that shit because I retain useless shit. Jazz, you know, that struggle. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, so when you were asking me earlier, what is some useless shit? Shit like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> shit the like army that. only has seven leadership, um, things. Yeah. Yeah. I, they probably encompass it, the exact same. Literally thing. leadership is the acronym for it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, that's way better than figuring out JJ did tie buckle. <laughs> Cause that makes sense. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a core army values. 
That's not leadership traits. It's the army values. It's different. Well, same fucking thing. No. Okay, then what are the what are the army, army leadership <laughs> traits? I don't. There's know. no way I remember that shit. I don't fucking know the core values though. Like that's leadership. Service. It, it starts with the L. Lo- the, loyalty. Loyalty. <laughs> ours, is re- ours is honor, courage, commitment. That's Marine Corps values. <laughs> Real easy. <laughs> the Army Corps values is just the Boy Scouts with a rifle. Yeah. Like it's. Fun fact I carried an Army values card in my left breast pocket almost the entirety of my enlistment of 15 years because my older brother gave it to me. Oh, I was going to say. Oh, it's and 11 I, principles of leadership. There you it, go. There you go. It yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, it's different. Anyways. I guess we all used to be cool or, or not. not. Or, <laughs> let me rephrase. We all thought we were cool <laughs> at one point or another. Yeah. Cause leadership is not seven letters. Well, it's, it's L D R <laughs> loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, uh, leader. S H I. What am I missing? A P P personal, personal courage. courage. I just couldn't spell leadership. There okay. <laughs> there's now look there's up, big Sarge over now there look up, in. Now look up the the Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what a, you know what a Cub Scout comes a Boy Scout. Well, you guys do the same <laughs> thing for like first brownie. Mm-hmm. You guys do the same thing for like uh, like like five paragraph orders, and you guys use the same acronyms. Those like SMEAX and all that shit. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Major uh, eats sugar cookies. Okay. Situation, Arjun. mission, execution, execution, administration, logistics, command and signal. Close. Yeah, that's what we do. Yep. Major yeah. I think signal and command is the same thing for us. Yeah. Okay. So the Boy Scout law is a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, <laughs> cheerful, thrifty, brave, <laughs> clean, and reverent. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. The Boy Scout law actually has more traits than the army. <laughs> Well, I mean, the obedient part is just you know, the <laughs> given. <laughs> and both of them will fuck you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's just in different ways. In much different ways. <laughs> much different ways. Yep. Fucking scout masters with bony fingers. What the fuck? <laughs> just as bad as fucking drunk priests. Holy shit. Anyways, this has got on too long. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we're going to call it there. <laughs> fucking... Like, share, subscribe, guys. Smash those buttons. Uh, you know, tell your mom. Tell your friends. Your fucking mom's friends. Jesus Christ. Um, check out our sponsors. Check out Grill Your Ass Off, our, our partner over there. And, uh, you know, uh, three little things, guys. And I'm going to wait till Scott gets back. He's taking a piss. But at his age, it takes a little longer. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he essentially is just going in there and just dicks coffee. And it's just. <laughs> That's it. Um <laughs> We're just going to sit here like this and wait for him to finish. Yeah. Can you like in post, could you speed this part up? <laughs> that was a hell of a description of somebody else's dick. He's going to play the, <laughs> the Benny Hill theme song. <laughs> oh, he's no, no. He's, he's getting yelled at by the old lady. Never mind. Oh. Well, oh no, he's not getting yelled at. They kissed. That's a good sign. It means he's not in trouble. He's also somewhat clean shaven. So good for him. <laughs> I'm going to raise my glass. I'm going to say thanks for being my freedom friend, boys. Shit, I'm empty. Hold cheers, on. cheers. You want some? Thank you, buddy. Three little things. They're not hard to do. Jazz, hit him with the first one. Fucking uh, smoke on. That would be it, John. Drink on. And God damn it, kids. Freedom to fuck, fuck on. on. Later.